and uh, I'll, Mr. Rodriguez will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated and I'll call the meeting to order. And uh, the first uh, order of business is the roll call. Good evening. Good evening. Armando Cisneros? Here. Efrain Sanchez? Mr. Sanchez had advised us that he would be out of town and asked to be excused because he had made the prior plans. Ms. Ana Sainz? Here. Michael Gutierrez? Here. Manuel Flores? Here. Jesus Rodriguez. Present. Luis Castillo Jr. Here. Richard Geisler. Here. And Israel Reina. Mr. Reina had advised me that he had a prior commitment and might be coming in late. Okay. But I guess for now you can mark him absent. Uh, there's an agenda item for public comment. If there's anybody that uh, wants to address the commission at this time, this is the proper time to do it. Have anyone signed up? Yes, the gentleman that walked out with Councilman Martinez did sign up for public comment. And he had signed up to address us? Yes. What is his name? Um, his name is Jose Santos Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez has come to visit us. Ah, he's not come with us. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, well, that being the case, then we'll move on to uh, item four to consider approval, the reading of the uh, minutes. And uh, you have both June 12th and, uh, of 2018 and June 25 of 2019. Uh, I was not a member of this commission on June the 12th, and so I have no opinion and would not be able to. <coughs> to address any changes or deletions. Uh, and so do you want a formal reading of the uh, minutes? Or what no, let's just find to just approve them. All right, is that a motion? Yes, sir. So, uh, Mr. Chairman. Motion and a second, any discussion? I would like to make a, a point, please. Uh, for purposes of clarification, I noticed there's a gentleman here by the name of Jose Luis Castillo. I just want to go on the record that that's not me. My name is Luis Castillo Jr. I believe there was another gentleman yes. at, at, at uh, a prior time. And I, I just want to make that. All right, would that change? No, uh, no, I'm not making any changes. I'm just pointing it out to you. Yeah. And pointing right. it out to All the right. commission. That, uh, that the, the person that's noted on the June the 12th, 2018 meeting, because of the similarity of the name, is Jose Luis Castillo and I'm Luis Castillo Jr. With, with that noted, are there any changes, uh, amendments, or deletions? Okay. All right, then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The uh, minutes are approved for both meetings. And then the next item is discussion with possible action on determining the particular sections of the city charter that the commission would like to review at future meetings for proposed changes and any other matter incident thereto. And I, I suppose I should apologize for the mix-up that we were not able to make that meeting uh, last Wednesday. And if I could at this time explain, I had submitted a proposed agenda uh, to the uh, city secretary, who then I guess forwarded it to the city attorney's office. And uh, there was, and I, I had asked for the city attorney's office to look at it and make make whatever deletions or corrections. And I had attempted to trace the first items on that list of proposed changes in, in our notebook. Uh, there was, there was a, an agenda prepared and it was uh, actually posted, but there was a glitch why it could not be posted online. And uh, 
Ms. Hale advised me that to do to have the meeting like that would be a violation of the open meetings law, and that is the reason that that was uh, uh, that meeting was canceled. In the meantime, <clears throat> I again uh, asked then for another uh, for another meeting date as quickly as possible, and uh, for an agenda again to be prepared. And, and again, there were some miscommunications uh, in the agenda, but the main thing that I looked at was I read the section of the uh, local government code, which I thought had been sent to you, on how a, a charter is amended. And it became evident to me, and I think uh, the city attorney's office confirmed it, it became evident to me that the city council has the right to propose whatever changes they want uh, to, to go through the process to notice the public and then have an election on it. Uh, and so I didn't think there was any need for us to revisit those items that they may or may not want because I think some of them, it's a new council some of them, some of them may not be valid anymore as to what the council wants. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, on the basis of that, in discussion with with the city attorney's office, um, I suggested that maybe we should just, as a commission, suggest the the uh, items that we want to visit and propose amendments on. And that is why this agenda is the way it is. So with that uh, said, uh, uh, I hope I've made it clear. Uh, if I have it here. The, the current charter, when you read it, speaks about on amending the charter and refers to local government code uh, chapter nine. Home Rule Municipality. And so I read it in its entirety, and it's a little vague, um, but from what I understand is, and uh, the city attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, we can propose whatever amendments we submit, but we will submit them to the city council, and then the city council decides whether they're going to submit it, accept them, and send them to the voters and have an election on them. Is that's, that? that's absolutely correct, yes. Right. Now, as you know, from my experience uh, in the original framing of this charter back in 81 or 80, whenever it was, uh, it was an entirely new charter. And it went as submitted by the Charter uh, Revision Committee to the voters. Uh, and so if, if we were to insist, in other words, if the council says, uh, no, we, we don't accept this one or this one or that one, which they may very well do. Uh, then we have the option to seek the signatures that are necessary to put it on the ballot. But, you know, I'm just looking at the future, something that may not happen. But that would be the way to get it uh, on the ballot. Otherwise, the way I see it, we're just going to make recommendations for changes to the charter that will go to the council for approval. Or rejection. Or rejection, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. if, if you will allow me, I want to just make very, some very short observations uh, about my view of the form of city government that we have now and my, I guess, my experience with it. Originally, the charter commission wanted and decided to have a city manager and to have, because of the problems that had been obvious for 40 years, they wanted to limit the power of the mayor and they wanted a strong council and a weak mayor. And that is how we came to, the, uh, to, the, to this charter that now has a strong council and a weak mayor that votes only in case of a tie and is more of a figurehead and a ceremonial head, uh, although he's a spokesman for the city and wields 
a lot of influence in that respect. Uh, but the central, the central thing in this charter is a city manager that runs the city, that makes the calls, a city manager that is trained in public administration, that has experience, that uh, can see the whole picture better than perhaps some politicians that uh, may be very good and well intended, but they're not trained in municipal government and urban planning, mass transport, uh, infrastructure, all those things that go into, into a uh, running a city. And so with that in mind, the, the council didn't want to run into a situation where you would bite away uh, from the power of the city manager by saying, well, but there can be some contact, you know, in some direction from the council. That was absolutely prohibited and it's prohibited now. And was it, if the charter, if the city council wants to give direction to any department, they have to go through the city manager, very similar to the school board going through the superintendent, uh, a corporation, the bank, the, the board of directors going through their CEO um, and the like. And so that is the concept uh, that I have of this charter, that if you're going to have a city manager, he's going to have the power to run the city. Uh, and if the council is unhappy with him, they fire him. He serves at their pleasure. And they get another one that makes them happy. But they cannot go um, and say, well, you know, I want to pave the streets in South Laredo, or, you know, I want, uh, you know, development projects for water in the north, or things like that. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you do that, then, then you take away from the entire concept of an expert running the city. So with that said, uh, I did pick out some, some sections of the, uh, uh, of, of, of the uh, charter that I think we need to visit, uh, that maybe we can improve on, or that at least we need to discuss. So it, you know, I, can, I can go through those, or I'll hear your suggestions. Uh, I have a few co comments, and Judge, uh, I, I, what you said uh, about the uh, the charter and the type of government that it provides, it, it provides for a uh, city council mayor, I mean, city council manager type of government. We moved away from the strong mayor and took away all the power from the mayor and, and, and gave it to the council and the, and the manager. Um, and in my opinion, I was, I was in on that commission when that happened. Uh, it was the right thing to do. Uh, it was a reaction to the abuses that have been occurring. Um, it's a separation of, uh, of powers uh, that government exercises. In the, uh, in the council, you have a, the legislative power of government. They, they make the rules. And then somebody else, Somebody else, some other uh, body uh, exercises, uh, ex executes uh, the law. That's basically the three branches that we have in the national government and in the state government. That's why we have Congress making the laws, and then you have the president putting those laws into effect. So that's what we have right now. Um, some of the things that that the council, the previous council proposed uh, will be encroaching on the powers of the manager. There are several things in here that are, that are very, very clearly functions, important functions of the manager and the council is saying we want to take those functions away from the council and for us to to exercise those those powers, so in essence, in those proposals that the council uh, 
and gave us the 28, uh, uh, 27, 27, 28 uh, amendments that were given to us last. But let me just clarify, those those were given to you um, when there was that shortage of time and they were proposing to have them and the November 18th um, election I cycle. Understand. So then they went back to the council, they decided you were right and they were going to go ahead and, and just put it off and allow the commission to have the year and a half to decide. So those were never actually voted on by the entire council for you all to consider. It was just sort of like a wish list. Each council member went on and said, this is what we'd like yes. to look into. Yes. Since that time, some of those um, propositions were actually um, done by ordinance. Others um, were not needed anymore for other reasons. Um, so if you'd like, we could go back to council and ensure that they in, want, if they in fact wanted you to, to consider those particular <laughs> propositions as opposed to you all going ahead and bringing up your own language and um, determining which charter provisions you'd like for them to consider. Okay. The, those proposals that they gave us last year, which we have here, or at least I have. And, and I think all of, all of us have those proposals. Um, maybe some of these proposals are no longer uh, being, considered. being considered because uh, it's a new council, but but I think that most of these proposals are still going to be acted on by the council. Um, so I would want to I would want to discuss those amendments that they propose for us to consider, because here we have the opportunity to discuss them in detail, as much detail and as much uh, uh, time to take on each of those as, as we deem necessary. Whereas the council oftentimes doesn't do that and they, they vote on it and off it goes. So I think my proposal is that we consider those, those amendments that they gave us and that we go one by one because some of those are serious things that they want to like, um, like um, um, instead of the uh, manager um, hiring uh, the city secretary and the, um, and the city attorney as well, that those functions be given to the city council. Uh, uh, it, it, those two are. That was one of the propositions, but since then they did um, have an ordinance passed that did address some of the issues, so I'm not even sure that this council would still be inclined to have this okay. commission. Regar I think I, I regard as, I would still want to discuss them because they're very serious matters here. You're going to, if the council takes them up and, and approves them and, and, and pass them on to the, uh, to the voters, and the voters approve uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, amendments, it will take administrative functions from the manager and, and give them to the council. So then you would have a council exercising both legislative and administrative powers. So out the window goes the checks and balances. Well, could you uh, specify the particular sections of the code yes. that uh, you're talking about? I think I had listed them in the original agenda. Uh, so if you look at that, you can have an idea. Uh, yes, it's... Uh, it's uh, uh, you want me to go over all each of them right well, now? Well, Mr. Cisneros, you wanted to say something? Yes, I would like to, Ms. Hale said that some of these have been already taken care of by ordinance. So I would like a list of those that have been taken care of by ordinance so we know which are not going to be any longer considered. But I agree with Mr. Rodriguez that otherwise we should look at all of them. So if we can make that request from well, legal. If, if, if you want to make that, if you will look at the original, the original request that I had made uh, to have on the agenda was, uh, and I was told that Proposition A was to provide for administrative assistance for the mayor and city council members. I'm told that one was, would be taken off because that is not, some subject, a subject of the charter that that has been taken care of 
under the budget. Is that correct? It's, that's really just okay. a budget issue. So that was okay. And then the next one, it was to a proposition B1, uh, as included in our uh, folder, was to allow the city council to give directives to the deputy city manager, executive director, assistant city manager, and department uh, directors. Uh, do you want that as an agenda item? Because that, that's what they were proposing and, you know, was that you want us to consider that and say yes or no. That would be, isn't, isn't that what's on, on the charter right now? Right that, now it's just through the city manager. I'm sorry? Right now it's, the directives are specifically through the city manager. Only, the solely. propositions yeah. would allow um, other That's people. why I'm saying that doesn't need to be changed because under the current city uh, charter, it's just the, the city, city manager. manager is the one in but charge. But the proposition was to allow it to be um, other people such spread as the assistants. Spread out amongst deputies. other people. It was going to be spread out amongst other <coughs> assistants, etc. Correct. And it doesn't <coughs> specify who. But this one can't be considered anymore because it includes executive directors. We don't have them anymore. Right. right. So, yeah, we wouldn't amend that. Um, if, if Proposition B1 is going to change in any way this, the uh, manager having total control over that situation, if that, if that power is going to be given to other uh, employees, in the absence of the city manager, of course, the deputy city manager is the one that that handles the situation, right? Yeah. Uh, the um, I think there's a there's a it's it's kind of confusing I think uh, because the the manager handles everything right now, and the proposal is to to allow besides the city manager who besides the city manager then to be. There were two proposals by two different council members. E1 was they would specify exactly who they could um, talk to in addition to the city manager, yes. and the other one was whoever the city manager designated. So it, it would have depended on what language was selected. But only one can go to the voters, right? Because they cannot yes. approve both, and then you'll be Well, they, they sort of contradict themselves. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. The now, uh, Michelle, the, the, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, not familiar with the budget, the city manager's designee, is that someone he designates in his absence? Correct. Right now, that's required. So it makes sense that the city council would be able to give direction to the designee. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. So, <laughs> back to the... It's not as simple as it looks. No, no, it's because it is, it is, uh, it is uh, it's confusing to me. Uh, Right now, as, as it's explained on the, uh, for B2, it's only the manager period. Is, or, that, is, is that the explanation or currently? Or a designee. Yeah. Yes. Or someone that yes. he designates. Yes. Um, so what then is the difference between the proposal and what's on the charter for B2? Right now, it's just the city manager. As proposed, B1, for example, the city manager would not have to be out or absent. It could just mean that the city um, council could give directives through somebody who's in the city manager's office, such as the deputy or one of the assistants. So it kind of expands the power. And right now it says the word solely. Only uh, through other, the solely through the city manager. So that would be an expansion by one person, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. By the designee. And in B1, so it would be several people. Yes. E2 could be, didn't even have to be city managers, it could be anybody he designates. And in, and in B1, it's several people that, that can be... Specific people, yes. Okay, so either way, it's, the way it is right now, it's a manager. And, and uh, the, the least change in this amendment would be that the, the manager designates somebody, and then it would just be him and that designee Correct. in his absence only, of course. Whereas the other one, it's a whole bunch of people. So, Mr. Brock. so I, I would, uh, I would keep it the way it is. But, but of course, well, if the manager but cannot my be. question is, you know, we have to decide we which consider. items we want to pull exactly. for next time to take action on, and and so that's the issue today. Uh, 
Do you want to go through the list and see which ones you'd yes. like to consider for the next meeting? Right. Which ones are the ones that you mentioned uh, you used the term that some of them are, some of them have been are no longer been? Some of them have been addressed. I don't know if there are other additional issues. Again, that would be the city attorney and city secretary. I know they passed ordinances um, as to who they, they needed to um, um, answer to, So, but there could have been other issues with regards to that. Um, also, uh, the one about the... Uh, if we can go through them, if you want to go through them. Uh, do you have, uh, do you have uh, who proposed, what city council uh, no, member proposed each of these? Uh, no. No, you do not have it. No. So we don't know. Which council member? Which council no, not, member? Not a, we'd have to go back to, to the uh, Would we get that meeting to see. Uh, in the email? We could get that for you, definitely. I'll forward it to all the emails right away. You can have that. But I don't have it here. Plus the ordinances that already did away with some of the... Yes. Okay. Yeah, we did a presentation to council, so I'll, Two I'll things get that we too. can get it through the Plus. email. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there may be some of this 26, I think I counted, right. prop propositions that are no longer, we don't need to address. Correct. And, and I, I know that just looking at the police chief, that was addressed, the fire chief, that was addressed. So it was, it was typically okay. the... Um, the attorney um, that was just the bailiff and administrative assistant. Again, that might be a budget issue. So, I mean, we could bring them back, and I could have those that information for you. And again, you could just pass through that item or table it at the time if you didn't want to consider it. Yeah. Let me uh, make some suggestions, and then we can revisit, you know, each one of those items and put them on the agenda. And I think we can make short work of them, but uh, let me tell you what some of the problems that I saw with this charter. Uh, section 2.07 on quorum. The quorum to have a meeting is four councilmen and the mayor. Think about it. That's half the council only. The mayor doesn't vote. And so th that creates a dilemma because if any action is taken, three wards can decide what's good for the entire city. And so I don't know, and on, on a lot of the sections, it takes five votes, five affirmative votes of councilmen to approve hiring and appointments and things like that. Cool. So I think that one has to be revisited, and we need to discuss why, uh, you know, whether we keep four or, you know, five in the mayor, the four in the mayor, or whether we just say five councilmen, uh, because then that would be a majority, and then they could take action. Because envision this. There's a meeting with four councilmen present and they take an action that the mayor doesn't like and he vetoes it. And then, to overcome the veto, you need five votes. So, you know, it's never gonna happen. Uh, but if you have five councilmen there present uh, for, a forum, for a quorum and they take action, and there's a veto, then those five can, can override the veto. Now, if it's four to one, then the veto stands. So quorum for the city council is four council members? It's four council members and the mayor or five council members. Yeah. And, and I would think that four councilmen and the mayor doesn't work. That is the way it is right now? Yes. Four and four. mayor. Or five council. So I think we need to revisit that one and discuss it and, and look at all the ramifications of it. Now, it may be that we want to say, yeah, you know, uh, it's okay and it'll take three votes to override the veto. If that's what, you know, what you think is the right thing to do. But three votes is three, three eighths of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the council. And you know, it, it just doesn't sound right to me. So that's, that's one section that I see a problem with. Then if you look at 2.04B, forfeiture of office. 
Uh, you know, I'm leery of forfeiture, especially uh, when the council is going to decide on forfeiture. Uh, and it'll take, uh, what is it, two thirds of the council to, to declare forfeiture of office. And we need to define, uh, as you can see in there, we need to define moral turpitude so that there is no question when there is uh, an action involving moral turpitude uh, that, uh, you know, and that's going to take some legal uh, wrangling uh, that I'm not prepared to, to, to give an opinion on, but yeah, I think at one point, driving while intoxicated is considered moral turpitude. And moral turpitude is, you know, is a creature of the federal government. Uh, we don't have it in state government. And so it's not defined, but obviously conviction of a felony, uh, conviction of uh, mis misappropriation or official misconduct, things of that nature. And then we need to, to decide if whether the offending conduct was before election or after the election or during the term, or if it's simply in terms of the date of conviction. So th there's a lot of vagueness in there, and I, I think we owe it to, to the city and the council to clear that up so that there's no, no doubt. No vagueness. Uh, and like I said, you know, Section 2.05 talks about that the council is the judge of the qualifications uh, of the, uh, the councilman and of the forfeiture. And vision is there's one odd man out that doesn't go along with the group, and there's a clique, and they don't like it. All of a sudden, uh, ward number three will be empty because, you know, the, the rest of the people ganged up on him. The, the more recent attitude that I would have is that there be a section in here that authorizes if the issue comes up for the, for the city attorney to file a, a, um, a motion for declaratory judgment in a district court. And that, that way you take the politics out of it. But, I mean, that's me thinking. Uh, so that's, that's another problem that I see. Uh, the one that's been in the news recently, 6.045. Uh, Whether the city can make expenditures for, uh, in this case, for the water, uh, for the water lines for developers. Or whether it's a developer or, you know, whether it's some company coming from out of town that's gonna set up a factory or whatever, you know. How far can the city go in, in giving breaks to bring industry. It, it's a dilemma. It's a dilemma because we want Laredo to grow, but at the same time, uh, should there be some protection for the taxpayers? Uh, you know, that you don't give, give money to the wrong person, sure. uh, you know, and he walks away uh, with a nice development with money in his pocket. Uh, the other one that I, uh, was looking at was, uh, <coughs> well, it talks about non-city, uh, for an expenditure for a non-city government function. You know, those need to be clarified. What, what does the charter mean? Is it, it, it's a limitation on the council, or is it not a limitation on the council? And where does the money come from? The general fund or from the users of water or some other uh, utility. Uh, then I looked at 10.4 A and B, 
the uh, determination of election results. And some of you may disagree with me on this. But the way it is now, you have 10 people running. No one gets a majority. You have to have another election. And uh, I'll go the term li limits because the one in office stays there until the runoff election. And so do we want to keep the way it is now, it, you need a majority. That's why you need a runoff election. Or do you just simply declare a plurality of, you know, whoever gets the highest number of votes to be the winner? When you have like 10 people running or seven or five. Uh, then there's uh, what comes every 10 years is the uh, just, the adjustments to the to the council to the council districts you, you know Laredo is very dynamic there's a lot of growth in the south there's a lot of growth in in the north uh, having to equalize the wards mm -hmm. so that they're equal in number you know in equal equal number of voters I mean, you don't want uh, one one district that has thirty thousand and another one that has ten. It's not fair. So but, we uh, need to visit that. But the uh, the districts are are drawn based on population, not on voters. Correct. Yes, and population. Population. Yes. So you could have in one area only uh, half of the adults registered to vote for whatever reason versus 60, 70, 80% in another district. Well, it's in, term, it's in terms of the census every 10 yes. years. Yes. And whatever the census shows, but we need to clarify, you know, how it's going to be done. And uh, yeah. I, I think we need to revisit that area, you know, and I encourage you to read that, that section of the charter. Uh, as well as the sections on, uh, you know, recall and the number of signatures needed for uh, for recall. Yes. You know, th that one needs to be visited, and uh, let's see what's the fair thing to do. Yes. And and the other thing is, I think it came up with the uh, recall on Councilman Vera. Yes. There was an issue whether if the recall uh, was successful. When does he leave office? And we need to put in there that he leaves office immediately. You know, if, if the voters recall him, he's out. She's out, whoever it is. And that's not the case right now? No. no. Well, it's it's a little vague, and you know, I don't know. Uh, I think ultimately it was resolved, but see, you don't want the charter to be vague. You want it to be very clear so that there's no room for the lawyers to argue. I think that's state law, though. I think he's a, once there's a recall and the voters have voted a person out of office, it's immediate. But it's probably needs to be. So done. those are some of my ideas. And again, you know, uh, I don't want to dictate where we go or how we do it. Uh, I'm open to suggestions and motions on what goes on the agenda next meeting. Yeah. Well, I think for sure the the recall. Uh, needs to go back to what, how it used to be. I agree with you. I agree with that pretty soon. Because that's n now to recall somebody, you would have to have more signatures than people who voted in the election. It doesn't make sense. And that was slid in. And that's what I worry about, even, and with the city managers too. We sometimes give them too much power. And I can see where they're asking the city secretary and the city attorney to be responsible to the council and not to the city manager. Because we've seen some city managers that play some really gotcha politics. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> there is no perfect form okay. of government. <laughs> and whatever type of government but you have, it, it, Let's it, look at 11.01, the recall provisions. Uh, it calls for uh, 
registered voters equal in number to 10% of the registered voters in the city of district or district election to which the elected official was elected. 10% of the registered voters, if we're talking about a ward, it's it's 10% of the uh, registered voters in that ward. And is that a good number or do you want to change it? Should it be versus, five, should no, be versus, versus 10% of the people who voted 10, in the election? 10% of people who vote, that's how it used to be. 10% of people who voted in the election. Yes. So we and would then want if, to change, if, change it back? Yes. Yes. Because if, let's say, 1,400 people showed up to vote, well, you want to put that in the form of a motion to be one of the items for the next meeting? Uh, sure. Right. To return to the original charter. All right. There's, there's a, uh, a motion to amend the recall provisions uh, under 11.01. Is there a second? Yes. Second. A second. All right. There's a motion, a second uh, by Mr. Cisneros. Uh, motion by Mr. Geisler. Any discussion? Right All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so that that is the first agenda item that we will have next time. What else do you all want to do? Uh, we should be able to dispose of that one rather quickly, so we need more agenda items. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, are we are we using the ones that we have as the benchmark or? Well, if you want if you want to make that motion, then we'll, we'll go back to that wish list. No, I'm I'm saying because we're also waiting, right? Wasn't there a motion to the ones that have been already passed to tell us, Mrs. Cisneros? We're going to have a revised wish list next time. So you see, right now we don't know which ones have right. been taken care of by ordinance. Right. So we might put one that's already been taken care so of. So can, can you so. get us that information as to which ones we should have of that wish list? Yes. And I can tell you right now that the police and the fire were, were addressed already, as well as the first one with respect right. to the staff member for council. Okay, so, so you, you have a motion then to, lit, to uh, consider the items that were in the uh, notebook that uh, have not are not obsolete by ordinance or otherwise. W will that be sufficient? Yes. All right. Motion and there's a move second. Um, Any discussion? Let the record reflect that Mr. <coughs> Israel Reina has entered the building. The building. The building. <laughs> All right, there's uh, any discussion on that? And, and just to make it clear then, you will be able to draft those items by way of uh, agenda items, one by one, on the ones that are not obsolete that are in the notebook. Yes. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Questions? Regarding, yeah, regarding that situation, um, also if the council members that were replaced as a result of the last election, if those those members that have been replaced, yeah, they were the sponsors. Uh, if they sponsored any of these items, then then I wouldn't object to to those being eliminated. Although, if there are major things in there, I would still like to d discuss them because uh, again. The checks and balances. Well, they'll be on there, and we discuss. We can discuss whether we want to adopt them, or scrap them, okay. or suggest something else in their place. Any other discussion or questions? Are you getting ready to close the uh, the meeting? No, for this particular. No, just just, on just to call for the question on the motion. The motion, yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. What else do you want to do for the next meeting? I, I think it would be a good idea to look at the interference with administration, whether the city manager solely or the city manager and the designee are the ones whom, to whom the city council can address. 
Well, I don't know if that's going to be an obsolete one, but that's not obsolete. That one. We, we can have that's already on there. Yeah. Okay. That's already on. So there. We can discuss it next time. Yes, okay. and I can tell you we're probably going to make sure to work on that okay. one too. That one. <laughs> Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there'll be the entire city council here <laughs> telling us differently. That would be good if the council were here, and then we could ask them uh, the reasons. Feel, the reasons yeah. why they're proposing How do you this feel change. About it, right? Yes. Well, I, you know. I you can know, honestly, just, I can answer. I, I know it came up. That's why they brought it up because there was a question as to whether the city manager did in fact have that authority um, to delegate without it being in the charter. So it was a question that was brought up because of an issue, and that's why the council wanted it to be clarified in the charter because. Um, it, right now, it seems to say that it's only the city manager, but according to the city manager, that's just not practical sometimes when he's not here or he's not available. So they just wanted to be um, clear so that there was no confusion or question. What I see uh, that may be a problem, not because you're here, but it, it, you know, the one that has it, the toughest job is the city attorney because. The council may have some idea that they want to do something, and uh, because the city attorney doesn't answer to them, mm -hmm. may not like the legal advice, and so they may want to have their own legal counsel. That that's an example, not necessarily true, but it, it could be true of anybody else, the traffic director or any anybody that <coughs> they don't like what's going on. They receive complaints. And instead of going through the city manager, they want to go directly to that employee or director. Right. Okay. I think we pretty much have exhausted the agenda for next time. <laughs> uh, the, uh, those suggestions that you had also to look at, uh, are those also, have those, those Well, been? it's already a pretty packed one. I, I can, you know. I well, this is all, all of this is only for the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, that's going to be already quite a task. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean for all of these to be for one, for no, one meeting. No, over the but, course. Uh, yes. What I meant to say was over the course of whatever well, time we, it takes. We can do so it. We we one or two at a time, right? To uh, six items or seven items, okay. something like that. Yes. Right. And again, you can put them all in whatever you don't finish. You yeah. could. Well, I think that some might have my might require more. More than the others. More than well, the let's others. let's put them all there, and then we can table. You know, we can just go as long as as we can hold right. out, and right. then right. table the rest for the next meeting. Yeah, that's good. So long as we can do that, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and at some point, I will again bring up these ones that I've looked at, or maybe as I learn more as we sit here, uh, maybe I'm not understanding the charter. So, I think we're all in the same boat, Judge. Uh, we're all learning, but we'll, I think it'll be a learning process for everyone concerned. Okay. Uh, did, did you mention anything, or was it at the previous meeting that you said something about the Ethics Commission that we need also to look at that? Uh, I, I didn't mention that. Uh, <coughs> I, I mentioned the, the problems with, with you know, using public monies for a private purpose. You know, there's a section in here, 6.05, whatever it was. Yeah. We need to visit that one and make sure that we make it clear, you know, as to what the charter should say and what limitations that there are. And, and the other side of the coin, like I said, is, well, you know, how do you get industry in here? How do you encourage development? And so, you know, the question is, who pays for it? Where does the money come from? Uh, Mr. Reyna. Mr. Chair, I, I just want to... I apologize to everybody for being late. I was at the end of the meeting. Um, just to make, be sure I'm clear on this, um, is it the, the commission's position that that we're only looking at um, changes to existing uh, provisions in the city uh, uh, city charter uh, provisions, or are we also opening the door to uh, adding uh, provisions to the city charter? I, I think I answered that question. You weren't here. The way I read the uh, local government code and the charter, the city council is the one that decides what goes in for charter amendments. 
And basically what we're doing here is drafting recommendations uh, after we take public comment and discuss it amongst ourselves. If, if, for example, what our recommendations are rejected, then our, our way would be initiative and referendum to get it on the ballot. Right, I, I've been through that before and you know, saw a slaughterhouse here of many of the proposals that we made last time. So, so I'm familiar with that, that approach that the city council takes to, to recommendations from this commission. Uh, but I just want to make sure that, you know, there is, uh, the commission is accepting amendments to the charter that, uh, we, uh, that would basically add to, uh, add a different provision that's not existing right now, not simply amending those that exist. I guess after our work is done and we have completed the recommendations, it will take a presentation to the council to explain to them uh, why we did what we did and sell it, you know, uh, and hopefully they'll bite on it. And if not, uh, there's the ballot box and there's recall and referendum that we have in this charter. I need clarification uh, on what you just said. Uh, is, are you saying that we're only limited to what they propose, the council proposed for us to consider? You're saying, can we ourselves propose? Initiate. Initiate here changes to the charter. Is that, is that? No, no, no. I, I've been through this before. I served in the commission some years ago. And so I understand that, that we are free to, to make any, recommend, recommend any changes to the city charter provisions that exist. The only thing that I was asking if, there's a new interpretation now that we're only looking at uh, at amending existing city charter provisions versus adding I see. having the the uh, the right to amend to provide new provisions. I to think both. Right, no, I, I understand table. the first part. But. Everything everything in the charter we can look at. As a matter of fact, before you got here, I ran through a list of items that I think we need to visit that are not part of this wish list. Well, but I'm, maybe I'm not being clear. Uh, what the city sent to us saying, look at these issues. Okay, I understand that. We can do with it what we want. Uh, and they'll do with them what they want when it comes down to it. If they want to, they'll put them on the ballot. Uh, so that may be like, we may be going through a mood exercise here. But uh, I'm saying, you know, the existing provisions, you know, we're, we're looking at those if we want to, right? And, and say we want to change this or that in that provision uh, to make it more tighter, make it better, more effective, whatever, it's clear it up. But there are provisions that, you know, we have in mind, I have in mind to, to add that don't exactly. even exist, okay? Yes. And let's say an equal rights amendment to the charter, okay? Let me give you that example. It doesn't exist. Exactly. So, so we're, we're that's what I'm saying, you know, is that, that the commission is taking that position that, hey, if you think there's something in the charter that's not there, you want it there, then go ahead and propose it, you know? Mm -hmm. New rights can be created, you know, from our proposals or protections. Well, again, you, you propose an agenda item and uh, make it a motion, there'll be a second, and if this body says, let's go, that's the way to get it on. I would like uh, also a, at some time for us to consider yeah. the the idea of incorporating yes. the entire yeah. charter yeah. <coughs> into our ethics yeah. ordinance. Be because a lot of the ethics complaints that have gone to the ethics commission have come back saying it is not our jurisdiction because that specific section of the charter is not incorporated into the ethics. <coughs> so wouldn't it make sense to incorporate the entire charter into the ethics ordinance to whereby a violation of the charter would automatically be a violation of the ethics commission? Well, of the ethics ordinance, yeah, rather. The way I see it, uh, Mr. Cisneros, the sky is the limit. You know, if you want a provision in the charter that says every provision, uh, any violation of this charter is proper for the ethics commission to consider, 
there may be some legal ramifications, but uh, we could look into it. You know, if, if we if you want to discuss it, and uh, you know, and this body approves it, then it's on. I think that's a good idea to to pursue. Well, be careful, you might you might get sued. <laughs> okay, I'll be careful. <laughs> or somebody may pull a trump. Uh, any other item that you want to bring up as far as getting on the agenda for next meeting? It, it will be the next third Wednesday uh, in August, yes. right? Do you have a date then? And, and um, Judge, your, your proposals will be part of that. Not, I don't think uh, we voted on that. That's already too much, don't you think? We can add that. We have an agenda item to add more items. Uh, the way I look at, at those, you know, those are improvements that I want to make on the charter to clean up. Uh, but that'll be for the next meeting, too. Well, it, it, let me run by them again. And if you want to make a motion, we can include them, but it's going to be a lengthy agenda. But well, we did say that if we didn't get through all of them, we would table it. And yeah, for the next yeah, one. okay. It, the ones I wanted to visit were uh, 2.07C on the quorum, 2.04B on the forfeiture of office, uh, Specifically on 2.04, the definition of moral turpitude. 2.05, uh, that talks about the council being the judge of the qualifications uh, and forfeiture uh, of office. 6.04, uh, parenthesis 5, uh, the matter of expenditures on, on uh, non-city governmental function. Uh, 6.05, the capital program, C, exception. 10.4, A, B, determination of the election results. Section 10.06, um, the adjustments for the size of councils, the redistricting. And then I, I think we also need to, to look at... Uh, or did we already vote on on 11.02 on the signatures for recall? I think yeah. that was the first item we yeah. voted on. Gonna, it's yeah. be on so that's yeah. those are the items. Uh, if you want to include those, uh, make in way of a motion. So good. There's a motion uh, and a second. second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. aye. What's the aye. motion? To visit uh, his suggestions. Okay. That's that's what I wanted on there. The the motion passes. Uh, did, did you get them all, Ms. Brugan? Yes, In addition to all those that have not been um, yes. passed by ordinance, correct? Yeah. yeah. They, they may overlap, and if they do, well, that's fine. <clears throat> Anything more? Yes, sir, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Judge, before you, you um, conclude this meeting, uh, I want to make a, a suggestion, a request. Um, I would like um, for for this commission through the uh, through staff to invite the government classes of all the local high schools, uh, public and private, plus the government classes from Tamiu and uh, LC, so that they can come and witness government in action instead of getting um, what they get right now from the textbook. Uh, oftentimes it's a little different from what's in the textbook. So that uh, I, I would want, uh, if, it's, if it's the approval of this commission, for the, uh, each principal in each high school to, be, to receive a copy of the city charter and a, an invitation both through email and an actual hard copy in inviting them. And then a copy of the city charter for every government teacher 
in every high school and the university and the college, and also a personal invitation for those teachers to bring their classes, because we're, we're going to meet in a set uh, schedule so that they'll have time to, down the road, maybe not on the first meeting or the second, but down, down the road so that at their convenience, they can bring their classes um, and listen to what we have to say and, and also listen to what the public has to say. I think it's important because today we don't even have the press here um, to, to report to the, to the taxpayers and the citizens of this community. So I think the, the young people, uh, um, what better way of learning about government than to seeing it uh, being discussed uh, live? So if you want, I could make that in the form of a motion or? Go ahead, sir. I so move uh, what I just uh, said, that every high school government class, uh, in public and private, plus uh, Tommy UNLC, that they'll be invited um, um, by this commission to to make every effort to bring their classes and attend, <coughs> attend our meetings. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Cisneros. Question. Question. Call for the question? Well, you no, have I, I, discussion. I want, well, actually, I want to say something. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I, I have a problem, you know, making a special invitation, uh, providing city charters to, to school teachers who teach government and all that. I mean, that, that, that's, you know, that's great. That's a great, you know, is the uh, motion. Uh, but we need to make an effort to invite all the people of the city of Laredo to, to join us, to, uh, to, you know, we need to reach out to them and, not, and make ourselves accessible to them, wherever they are. My thinking had, has been since last time was, we were meeting at the airbase, I mean, uh, at the airport, you know? <laughs> and uh, we tried to get, you know, to kind of reach out by going, saying, well, let's have meetings in the different, distri in the different districts, right? Each district maybe should have us meet at a place that, where they're in, the district people are invited to those, to those city charter commission meetings. Those are just thoughts that I that come to mind because you're right. I mean, uh, democracy in action is something that we hear about, but we don't see, you know, and, and some of the deliberations is why did they decide to, you know, change the rule on this or that, right? The city charter provision on this and that, and what deliberations, why, you know, it happened. Sometimes we just get one, a one-liner, this is a proposed change, but we don't know why it was proposed uh, or who proposed it for that night. So, La gente debe de saber qué estamos haciendo, you know? They, they should know. And, okay. and, and we can't, you know, we can't uh, say, well, they know where we're, where, where we're meeting and, and everybody can get a bus or a ride out there to the city, city hall. And I think we need to show, you know, as the, that we are, you know, in those communities as well, uh, accessible to them and, and, you know, and that we're not, you know, we want them to, to be part of, of this process, uh, is the, everybody is invited to this, these meetings. We know that, pero como ya vimos, you know, right now we don't have anybody. But wait for the first controversial issue to come up. The press will be here. That's guaranteed, okay? And there will be some controversial issues that would be proposals that would be made. Uh, so we we are going to see the press here from time to time. So I, I'm just proposing that yes, let's reach out. In that respect, I'm with you. I'll vote for the motion. Uh, but I think we also reach out in these other ways to be out there in the community. Any other comment or discussion for the uh, If not, others? Yes, sir. Yes, can I speak in Spanish? Uh, sir? Yes, sir. Is yo creo que es uh, es uh, delicado que vengan a cualquier meeting o a cualquier día porque mucha gente no sabe exactamente lo que se hace, pero si no lo sabe, no lo va a entender. Eh, eh, me gustaría que meditáramos esto un poco más para ver si es en algunos meetings hacer estas invitaciones o en todos, porque puede prestarse a, a, confus, a confundir a la gente. Y nosotros no somos políticos, nosotros somos charter revisos. Solamente damos una opinión a votación, o sea, Hay que tener cuidado con, con 
lo que se publicita o lo que podemos enseñar. Esa es mi opinión. Bueno, yo creo que es nuestra obligación de aclarar las cosas, ¿verdad? De, de aclarar de qué se está discutiendo y qué este, está averiguando, de qué está decidiendo, ¿verdad? Es parte de nuestro papel, ¿verdad? De aclarar las cosas. Y porque si la gente está confundida cuando llega aquí, ¿verdad? Y se va confundida cuando se va de aquí, eso complica más de nuestra democracia. Eh, yo creo que nuestro papel no es enseñar a nadie. Nuestro papel es el que tenemos aquí de hacer nuestras opiniones y, y darlas a quien debe votarlas. Eh, eh, si alguien se confunde con ellas, que nos haga una request, que nos eh, pregunte. Pero eh, se puede prestar a que no seamos quienes tengamos que dar esto. Eh, perdón. Nuestro trabajo es nuestro trabajo. ¿verdad? El papel de nosotros está, este, es, ¿verdad? va según eh, este, a las, las reglas y las, las leyes de la ciudad. Es nuestro papel, nuestro oficio. ¿verdad? Es tal que tenemos que averiguar esas, ¿verdad? Esos, esas propuestas ¿verdad? y hacer una decisión sobre si sí o no se va a recomendar por la comisión. Entonces... Cuando viene la gente aquí a ver nuestro eh, trabajo en, en verdad, este, cara a cara, ¿verdad? entonces la gente va a tener derecho de hacer preguntas si se ponen en la agenda, ¿verdad? se van a tener que anotar en la agenda. ¿verdad? Y todo eso, ¿verdad? a nosotros, nos, 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 si nosotros les decimos, pues eso no, nosotros estamos averiguando todo esto, es nuestra recomendación, nuestra decisión, pero si, le quiere, si quieren saber, ¿verdad?, ¿Por qué? O, o explicaciones por esto y eso otro, pregúntenle a aquellos más arriba. Creo que no es, 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 es lo que debemos de hacer, ¿verdad? Creo que tenemos una obligación de explicar eso. Yo, yo coincido con, con nuestro reina lo que acaba de decir. Este, a mí se me hace que nuestro papel es uh, uh, Decirle al público lo que, lo, que, lo que se está proponiendo aquí, las propuestas del concilio y las nuestras. Es, estas juntas son públicas. Todo el mundo debe estar aquí porque aquí se van a decidir cosas o se van a proponer cosas que después el concilio decide sí o no y luego si la pasan a los votantes, los votantes deciden. Pero definitivamente que tenemos que explicarle al público lo que estamos haciendo. Yo no, yo no entiendo... ¿Qué es la confusión de que crearíamos al invitar a, al público a venir aquí? No. ¿Qué, ¿Qué sería el problema de, de que la gente viniera a oírnos, a, a, a oír lo que estamos debatiendo aquí? Es, perdón. Sí, es uh, muy diferente que alguien venga por su voluntad a saber qué es, a traer eh, personas de alguna manera eh, obligatoriamente por... Uh, por alguna invitación de vengan, o sea, nosotros, eh, repito, yo para mí el cargo que, que me han encomendado es muy claro, hacer nuestro estudio, nuestra decisión uh, sobre algo para proponerla. Todo lo que sea algo político, este, promocional o algo, tendríamos que consultarlo con eh, los que manejan la ciudad para que nos digan, los límites son estos. Nuestro trabajo es proponer modificaciones de la ley. Es, ese es el único trabajo. Todo lo demás no creo que sea lo de nosotros. <ríe> una invitación no es una obligación. Este, y qué más que educar al, a los jóvenes de la comunidad que están estudiando el tema, el tema de gobierno. Pero, perdón, es que sí entiendo el punto, pero si un maestro de escuela quiere traer su escuela y usted se lo propone fuera, eso es una cosa. Pero que nosotros votemos proponer que vengan es una promoción de nosotros que no está en, en, en nuestras uh, eh, capacidades pues no. sí, o sea personalmente todos podemos invitar gente que venga aquí a escuchar eso yo no creo que esté mal verdad pero el votar nosotros que vengan las escuelas o que vengan este, particulares es una promoción y creo que no nos corresponde a nosotros promo promover hay el, 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 la ciudad tiene eh, este, sus formas de promoverse ya establecidas. Perdón, es mi opinión. No, sí. Este, no creo que sea algo que sea 
se ha prohibido evitar, ¿verdad? No creo, so, es como dice usted la opinión, dos opiniones. Let me, let me cut off the uh, discussion and call to the question. Uh, the motion is to invite uh, the high school uh, government classes and the college uh, to our next meeting. And uh, to all the meetings. To all the meetings. All right. And uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, there's three. Uh, the motion carries. Three opposed. <laughs> Uh, let me just make one last observation on this topic. Uh, we performed a quasi-governmental function, and we are subject to the Open Meetings Law, and we are required to post an agenda, and that is noticed to the public. And so perhaps with the invitation, if we can get a copy of the agenda, deliver also the agenda with the yes. invitation. The invitation is going to be an invitation. It's not like we're going. To, we're telling them you're required to show up. I mean, I an invitation is I an invitation. That. I don't know where they misunderstand. They're not even just like a notice, for future. You know? For future. Are you welcome to come. Yes, exactly. You're welcome to come if you want to. If you don't want to, or if it's not feasible for them to not do so, that it's just an invitation. That's all. It's an open invitation to see how government works in actuality. Instead of we just have for the text for the end of the agenda. Or it doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. A motion by Mr. Castillo. Second. second. There's a second. Second. And all those in favor say aye. 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 We are now adjourned. Thank you very much. It was a nice meeting. Maybe next time we'll get <coughs>